everybody welcome back to Creekside Maples I'm Tony and as you can tell I got the mill all tore apart it's time to replace some bearings yesterday when I was milling I noticed some noise coming from the pulley wheels so I stopped looked at it and figured out that these bearings and these main wheels are going I have 240 hours on my mill and I've been milling 16 foot logs all week long they've been really big like 22 24 inch logs and so I've really given this mill a workout this week come to find out that the bearings after a while of much milling they do wear out so you have to replace those now I've already got this all tore apart just so that you can see what we're doing this wheel already this one has already been replaced I've done this um, earlier so as you can see there's no sound coming from this bearing at all and that is a telltale sign your bearing is gone if you hear sounds coming out of that wheel bearing so if you hear there let me put the mic down there's no sound it just should spin and there shouldn't be that low end noise or that low end roar or anything if you're hearing that you need to replace your bearings to replace these bearings it'll take you about an hour to do both sides I'm taking a little longer because not only did I replace the bearing here on this follower pulley but I'm also replacing the bearing on the uh, drive pulley and I'm also replacing the bearing in my clutch because I don't want one brand new bearing and one bearing almost wore out over here on this side I've got this pulled off so you can see assembled disassembled they're very easy to take apart and all you need to take them apart as you can see on this wheel here there's just your center bolt so get yourself your tools you need this is a 5 8 center bolt I just use my driver and spin it right off take it out and then once you take it out you can see I have a pull a puller up here on my clutch because I'm pulling this pulley off but I use the same puller and I just put it in the center and I pull these wheels off you do not want to be pounding on them and trying to get them off pull them off evenly so your shet your spindle does not get bruised marked up in any way and then once you pull them off they're real easy I'll show you over here on the table so here's what the bearings look like if you uh, order the extra parts kit when you purchase your mill you'll have these bearings with it and you can see that bearing is turning but it's turning stiff and I can hear it you can literally hear it this one here it's not turning hardly at all but listen that's a bad bearing there's two bearings in each pulley here's your pulley this has the bearings out the easiest way to get the bearings out now you got to be careful because there's a, obviously the back and the front and they only go in one way on these once you pull this center nut out center bolt out there's a lock ring right here pull this off take it to your workbench put your lock ring pliers right here and then that comes out and it looks just like that do yourself a favor get yourself a good pair of lock uh, uh, you know ring lock pliers so that they come off easier a little secret that I did I have a pair of needle nose pliers that are bent I sharpened the tips and they fit right in how do you get these out now you got to remember these are pressed in okay now I do have a press that I could have taken it up on but I didn't need to what I do is you'll see that these they're sitting right in here so what you want to do is 
this is the face. You're going to drive them out from behind. Get a socket. This one here is a 15 16 It fits perfectly on the center ring of that bearing. <clears throat> that bearing, just like that. With that bearing sitting in there, then you can take your socket and you can set it right on there. Put an extension on it. Get yourself a good ball peen hammer and give her a whack. And you got to come on to it. Don't be afraid. You're replacing the bearings, so don't worry about hurting them. Just make sure you do not beat on the edge of this or the edge of this. Don't use nails and screwdrivers and all that stuff in there because you're just going to mark up your, 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 uh, the inside housing of your pulley wheel. And so you can literally take those and they will drive right out through there both at the same time and then when you're done take some emery cloth get in there and clean that sleeve that cuff out clean it out and wipe it out and then take a little bit of grease on your finger and just go in there and grease in around that and that's what I've got done already now to put the new bearings in it's very simple now I will stress this Move this PV out of the way. I will stress this. Don't, when you're beating them out, don't just support your pulley wheel out on the edge like that or here like this. Get yourself some support that'll fit in close to that hole there because that way you won't break your pulley, okay? It puts all the weight where, or the, the pressure where it should be. So now, We've got two new bearings. Bearings come like this. Just open them up. These are SKF Explorers. The number is 6305-2RS1 forward slash C3s. Okay? So that's the bearings. And keep them clean. You don't want to get them all dirty. There's one. And there's two. Move the old bearings out of the way. You don't want to get them mixed up. Again, keeping your bearing clean. And then the new one, I always put them in, there's no really upside down, they're the same both sides, but I like putting it with the writing so you can see it. And so, that way if you ever have to replace them, you can tell what they are. So, start it, seat it like that, get yourself a block of wood. Don't use your socket to put them back in with because you're going to ruin the center of that. You want something that's going to drive the whole uh, bearing at the same time. So get yourself a good block of wood, put it on there. Now I turn the block of wood as I tap and there you go. There's your first bearing started in. Now I'm going to use an old bearing to lay on top of it just to get it down in there a little further. So there's that. Now I'm taking the next bearing, the new one, putting it in there. It's that simple. You just put it in there and tap it in. To drive it in rest of the way, again, get yourself an old bearing. Put it on top of it, line it right up nice and square so you're not hitting the edge of your sleeve or anything. Put your block of wood on. And there you go. You could turn it over, make sure it's all seated in good here there you go. 
And that is how easy it is to replace the bearings on these. Don't forget to put your snap ring back in. You can put that right in, real simple. There you go. A little secret they showed me years ago. To make sure your snap ring is in all the way, push it around a little bit. If it turns around easy, you know it's seated in there. And that's all there is to put that in. That pulley is good to go. So, now, I'm gonna do my clutch. Just because, because I'm gonna have a new bearing here, new bearing there, so I'm going to, might as well replace this one while I'm at it. It pulls right off, I already had this one started. Now there's a shaft chuck or key, whatever you want to call it on that. You can see the slot for it. Just be careful because that's going to probably come out with it right there. So you're all good. This gives you a chance now to take a look at your clutch. If you ever have to replace your clutch, this is how you do it. That clutch pulls right off that shaft. So that looks good. So again, you can see here inside the bearing or inside the housing there's the back of my bearing there see how that bearing is loose see if you can hear it that's that bearing we don't want that so we're going to take this one out again snap ring i always clean these up Good thing I checked that, because that bearing will not fit that there at all. Nope, it's the wrong bearing for that clutch. So we'll see if we can see the numbers on it. It's a 16412RS, and this was a 63052RS1C3. So this is a 1641, this is a 6305. So this is the wrong size bearing for that clutch. So there's nothing we can do about it. Always check your bearing sizes before you go snapping them out of there. Because had I beat that out of there, I would have been in an awful mess. Now I do need to replace this. So I will just have to call or try to find a bearing for that. So what we'll do is we'll get the uh, numbers off it and then we'll go see if we can find a bearing at another shop somewhere. Okay, so let's put this back together then. It's real simple. Same way we took it off, the way it goes on. Okay, that's on there. Put her back together. Get our driver. Now don't over torque these, they don't need it. All right, so over here on this, on the spindle for this driver pulley, it has a little bit of rust. So I want to take some emery cloth. I'm just going to clean that off. Just like that. There we go. I'm just going to grease this spindle. go and if you're afraid that you're going to get the front and the back mixed up just take a screwdriver or nail or something just put an F right on the front then you always know it's simple you won't get it confused so this 
just slides right back on over that spindle supposed to just like that and uh, we take the center bolt and we put her in and if you'll hand me the driver it's right behind you please my lovely assistant Again, don't over torque them. Now this should be totally quiet. Hold the mic down. No sound at all. So both of these bearings were making a sound. There, that one there was C's one bearing, but this one here was making that dull roar. Now, absolutely silent. That's how the bearings should be. So that's how simple it is to replace the bearings. <clears throat> now, while you got it apart, I like to clean my idler pulley, check on everything else. I'll clean up these, get the sawdust off of those, make sure those, I just replaced the guide, the roller guard pulleys here on these, you know, yesterday. So they're perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with those. They're all good. Just check everything else to make sure everything's working good. And you're golden. And that's really how simple it is to replace the bearings on these. So don't be intimidated. If you're not mechanically inclined, don't worry about it. If you just follow these simple steps, you'll be able to change out these bearings in under an hour without any problem at all. Good luck with it. Have fun milling. That's really what it's all about. While you've got it all apart, check your belts. Make sure they're not all cracked down here in the ribs and stuff. That's a good belt. It's because it's a new one. I put it on here a couple weeks ago. And your other belt on your follower pulley. Check it. One thing I find about these belts and the follower pulleys, and you guys have seen this on your own, is the edge will peel off just like that. It gets wore out, pressure on it. I don't know what does it. If your blade is running right on the metal of your pulley wheel, you need to replace your belt because your saw blade should not be touching the metal at all. It won't stay on. So that's how you can tell that. These here, very simple. Just take it, put it on. Everyone says, are they supposed to be loose and flopping when your wheel comes up around? Yes, they are. That's how tight that should be. And when that comes up around, it'll flop around there with your blade. That's what it's supposed to be. This here is not supposed to be tight, okay? And then we'll put this one on over here. Nice and easy. And then you just adjust your tension right here. If that's loose, I guess you have tension deficit disorder. Ha ha ha! See what I did there? Now I gotta get my ratchet and stuff to tighten that up. So on this, this is a 2021 model. So to tighten it up, you've got this screw here, bolt nut actually, and same thing here. So you tighten this one. Pull it down. Now, Woodland Mills, if you're watching, I want to give you a little bit of advice. When you make this tensioner, why don't you just take a little quarter inch nubbing of metal 
and weld it right there so a socket or cut a hole in it or whatever so you can put an extension in it and just turn your extension and that'll keep that'll make life so much simpler so that you can tighten this up because this here on this it's too big and you can't get in there but that's just me so your belt about a quarter inch yep no more than that and then tighten the bottom one I have a wrench on the back side of that to keep it. Tighten it in good and tight. There. So now your belt's good and tight. And I will say this. If you find that you can't get your tracking to line up after you've got a bunch of hours and stuff on your mill. It could very well be that the bearings have gotten weak or they're wore out. They're just not tracking properly in the bearing itself. So you may need to replace them. Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for always subscribing and leaving great comments. If you have any questions, go ahead, feel free to ask them. We'll do our best to answer them. Again, I'm not a pro at this. I've just learned some things along the way. Have a great day. Have fun milling. And we'll see you right back here at Creekside. Don't forget, thumbs up. Share the channel. Have a great weekend. Take care and God bless.